Hi, I'm Eliane from Patrick and Poodles, and today I'm going to show you how to turn these two double gauze fabrics into the coziest little baby blanket you've ever seen. Double gauze is a perfect fabric for babies because it's super, super soft. It's made out of cotton, which is really breathable and great for baby skin. I'm going to use two cuts of this double gauze fabric today, so you want each of your cuts to be a yard and a quarter long. You're also going to need some marking tools. We're going to tack our quilt, which means we're going to add little yarn ties all over it to make sure that we're keeping all those layers together. So you're going to need something to tack it with. I'm going to be using Orofil 12 weight thread today. You could use pearl cotton 12 weight thread. You could use yarn, um, 1 8 thin ribbon, um, and even embroidery floss. So there's a lot of different options that you could use. You can also tack your quilt by machine, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. You're going to need some supplies when you're going to be tacking your quilt. So needle, thimble, and some scissors. You also need some fabric scissors for cutting your double gauze, batting, and a ruler, and your sewing machine. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we're cutting our fabric to be the right size for our baby blanket. What I'm going to do is on both of these fabrics, I'm going to cut off one of the selvage edges. I've chosen to cut off this one because it's really easy to follow the edge of the printed fabric and to cut off just the selvage itself. I'm using scissors here, but you could decide to use your rotary cutter and ruler if you have one handy. To set this one aside for now. What I'm going to do to this taupe one, I'm going to do the same thing to the green one right after I'm done. So here's the edge I just cut. What I'm going to do is lay out my fabric and fold it on the diagonal. What I want to do is turn it into a square. So I know that I'm going to have to cut off one of the edges to make it a perfect square. smooth it out gently as I go. Double gauze is very soft, which also makes it very flowy. Just take your time. Again, if you have a rotary cutter and ruler, you can always decide to do it that way as well. But if you don't, you can do it the way that I'm doing it today. I am going to cut this line here so that I have a nice square piece of fabric and then I'm going to do the same thing to the second fabric which is to cut off one of the selvage edges, fold it in half to create a square and cut it so that I have a square piece of fabric. time to sandwich them along with some batting. So the batting goes down first. I am using a cotton batting today and because I really want the finished quilt to be really cozy, I've decided to use two layers of batting. So I've got both my layers of batting down and I'm just going to make sure that they're nice and smooth. On top of my batting I'm going to layer my first fabric. going to stick a little bit naturally to the batting, which is great. We're not going to use any pins or anything um, right now. We're just going to want to make sure that it's straight and smooth. You'll notice that my batting is bigger than my piece of fabric, and that's because it's a little bit easier to wrangle this way. I'm going to trim my batting after I stitch all the layers together. So you want your two fabrics to be the same size, but your batting can be bigger. It's going to be actually more helpful that way if it is. If you have a nice floor space, this is a good thing to do on the floor, as you have a little bit more maneuverability than here on my table. 
with my first piece of fabric down onto my batting fabric right side up. I'm going to take that second piece of fabric, lay it on top, and I'm going to put the two right sides of my fabric together. You can tell I'm just kind of smoothing it out as I go. Double gauze tends to like to shift a little bit, so we just want to make sure that it's going to be right where we want it to go. Because it likes to shift, this is a good idea now to add some pins all the way around so that we're keeping all those layers where we want them to be. Once I've pinned all the way around, it's time to sew. We're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance. But we are going to leave about an eight inch space open on one of the sides. So I can imagine that I'm going to start, you know, right between these pins, I'm going to start right around here, stitch all the way around my blanket, and then stop right after this pin, leaving an opening so that we can turn it right side out once we're done stitching it. Here I am at my machine and I'm ready to sew all of my layers together. I have my walking foot on so that it's going to help guide all those layers through without any pulling or puckers. And I have my stitch length at a three, so something a little bit longer to be able to stitch through all those layers. Again, what we don't want it to do is to pull or twist our fabrics. If you're, if you're having some issues with that and you're finding that it is pulling your fabric, try adjusting your presser foot pressure or looking at two of my videos, one of them about walking foot troubleshooting and one of them about adjusting your presser foot pressure. So we are going to go ahead with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to start stitching forward all the way across my quilt. As you can see, I'm gently guiding the quilt, all those layers, through the sewing machine. I'm not pulling it, I'm not twisting it, I'm just kind of holding it gently and helping it to guide through evenly. Here I noticed that my two fabrics, even though we started with the same uh, length of fabric and we cut them both into a square, you would think they would be about the same size. One of mine is a little bit bigger than the other and the smaller one is on top so that I can just follow the line of the edge of the fabric of the smaller fabric. Um, so that's the one that I'm going to use. So if you find that when you go to pin them together, one of them slightly smaller, put that one on top and just follow that one as your measurement guide. So I've sewn all the way around. I've left an opening to be able to turn it right side out. I've backstitched and I'm going to cut my thread and bring this back over to my table so I can cut all the layers straight together. All right, take your scissors and gently cut away the excess batting. And if your fabrics weren't perfectly straight and you have a little extra hanging uh, fabric from that hangs over your seam allowance, make sure to cut that off as well. So we're going to just cut so everything is nice and straight. Again, if you have a rotary cutter and ruler, feel free to do that part with your rotary cutter as well. You've noticed that um, I haven't been too precise about my seam allowance and that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's all going to be hidden inside of our quilt. So now we're going to turn it right side out um, through this opening. Something that can be helpful too is to clip the corners. Being careful not to clip into your seam allowance. Um, this is just going to help reduce some bulk on those corners. It's going to help them have a nicer, sharper point. So you can go ahead and clip the corners of your quilt, then turn it right side out. When I'm turning it right side out, what I want to do is I want to keep the batting with one of my layers of fabric and I'm just going to take that top layer of fabric and turn that one right side out. If you get to this point and it feels a little stressful because there's lots of layers, they don't seem to be budging, don't yank. Just gently find one of the pieces that wants to move a little bit and just gently move that one. 
and then you'll find that as you gently move them all, they'll start to unravel themselves um, from this big tangled mess that you have. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna poke out my corners a little bit. I like to use these scissors. They have a pretty blunt edge. If you have some scissors with a really sharp edge, don't use those to poke a corner out because you'll actually poke a hole in your fabric. Something else that you can use is the edge of a pen that's not um, obviously got ink on it uh, or a screwdriver, something that's got a sharpish, bluntish edge to be able to poke out your corners. There's one. Go ahead and do the other three. We have one last thing that we need to do with our machine before we can add little yarn ties over our quilt. And that is that we need to top stitch over this edge. Top stitching means that you're going to be stitching all of the layers together close to the edge. And what that is gonna do is secure all those layers. So obviously we've already sewn the whole thing by machine. However, we have that one edge here that we left open so we could turn it right side out. So it's helpful now to take this over to your iron, give it a good press, and really help train this edge a little bit um, so that it's gonna be easier to catch all those layers with your machine. So I took this over to the table. I cut away the excess batting. I flipped the whole thing right side out using the hole that I had left here open. And then I pressed all the edges flat. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge to not only enclose this hole that we made, but also to encourage these fabrics to stay on their respective sides of this quilt. I'm using the uh, stitch length of three again, and I have my walking foot on. I'm gonna back stitch and then go ahead and stitch all the way around, again, with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Take this one slow, uh, definitely take your time. to bring this back over to our table, add in our yarn ties so that we can be done. Now it's time to tack our quilt. We can do this with yarn ties, which is what I'm gonna show you, or you can also tack by machine. If you're gonna tack by machine, I have a video on how to do that, and I'm gonna link it in the description below. The first thing to determine is which is your front and which is your back. I've decided that these leaves are gonna be the front of my quilt, and this chevron is gonna be the back. So I want the front of my quilt facing me, Next thing to determine is how far away you want your tacks to be. You might have this determined for you by how far away your batting can be quilted. A lot of times on packages of batting they will tell you how far away you can make your uh, quilting and so you definitely want to follow the instructions on your batting package. Some battings are three to four inches away, some are nine inches away, so it really depends on what your package says. If you can quilt it up to nine inches away, you might decide that that's how many tacks you want, or you might decide that you want some more ties in between, in which case you would def definitely want to add that in. So that's the first thing to determine is how far away you want them. You can also de decide that if you don't want to use a ruler, you can use your hand as a guide and just tack every hand width away. I've decided for this quilt to do them five inches away. I'm gonna start in one corner and I'm gonna work my way across the quilt. So I'm just folding it up a little bit so I can show you what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna start over here in this corner. I've decided to do them five inches away, so I'm gonna start five inches from the corner. So here is gonna be my first tack. You might decide that you want to mark all of your quilt tacks first and then go ahead and start tacking, or you might wanna mark them as you go. Um, or you don't have to mark them at all. If I say, okay, here's where I want to go, maybe I just put my needle down, come back up, move my ruler, and decide where I want to put it next. If you're going to mark your quilt, I recommend using tape or chalk. Um, I wouldn't recommend a hair marker just because gauze is such a loosely woven fabric. You wouldn't want to rip it or disturb it any more than you have to. 
The first one we're going to do is a traditional tie, which means this is what you'd see if you found a tie quilt um, that was done years ago. A lot of times traditional tie quilts used to use yarn, uh, but today I'm using 12 weight thread. I'm going to double it so I get a little bit more uh, oomph, a little bit more um, dimension and you can see it a little bit better. So I want it, the ties to be part of the feature of the fabric. If I wanted to hide my ties, I definitely wouldn't be using a dark thread. I might use a white thread and then I would want to use just a single piece of thread instead of doubling it up. So I have it doubled and this is where I want to go. I'm going to put on my thimble. I'm going to bring my needle down through all the layers to the back. Then I'm going to bring it back up about a quarter of an inch away. Making sure that it comes up a quarter of an inch away on the front as well. Right about there. Pull my thread so I leave a little tail and I'm going to double knot, so a single knot. And a double knot. I'm going to cut this. You can leave as much or as little as you want. If you want a lot showing like this, you could also cut it, cut it a little bit closer. And you can see then on the back, you've just got this little, this little divot that's tying and holding all of your layers together. So that's a traditional tie. So you can go ahead and you can tie your quilt all the way across as far away if you, as you've determined till the whole thing is done. And then you're done and you're ready to gift it or keep it. I really am happy that I used two layers of batting in here. It makes it super, super soft and cozy. And it's just a really fun, easy project. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And as always, um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe so you never miss another one. Thank you.